Hi, Miss Kayla. Hi. All right. Well, today, you guys, we are joined by the founder of the travel blog, Just Chasing Rabbits. Um, her name is Jennifer Campbell, and Just Chasing Rabbits um, is a travel blog. Um, she says it's for sharing inspiration for iconic, unusual, and amazing travel for the forever young. So, Miss Jennifer, what are you going to tell us about today? So today I have some of my very favorite souvenirs from Mexico that I would like to share. They're called Alebrijes, and I have a very, well, not very large collection, but I have quite a few of them. I have one for every trip that I've made to Mexico, plus one from Texas. You've been to Mexico quite a few times. Yes, I actually have not counted them. But quite a few times. Do you know about Oliver Hayes, Miss Kayla? I know a little bit. I've seen the movie Coco. Mm -hmm. If you've seen this movie, mm -hmm. then you probably know Dante or Pepita or one of the other Oliver Hayes in the movie. And I actually have a little Dante that I painted. So in the movie Coco, they are spirit guides that help people make their way into the land of the dead or find their way around. You know, Dante helps Miguel um, find his way around the land of the dead and find his ancestors and things like that. Um, they're not actually traditionally spirit guides, but they come from your imagination. They're all just totally made up whatever you want them to be. So why not let them be spirit guides, right? That's what your imagination is for. It can be whatever you want. So I learned a lot. This is probably 2005, I think, was the first time that I ever saw these. And <clears throat> it was explained to me that they are creatures that come from dreams. So again, imagination, weird things that maybe don't necessarily go together like you know a horse with wings and a unicorn horn or you know a dragon breathing fire like it can be whatever you want um so then the first time that I went to Mexico was in 2008 and I found a store a gift store where they had some for sale and I bought my very first one which I believe was this one. It was the very first one I bought. And since then, I've learned a lot more um, about where they come from, about what they are. So if you buy one today, you're most likely going to get one from the Oaxaca area of Mexico. Um, there are 150 families, or over 150 families there that make these and sell them to gift shops or sell to tourists, you know, and other people. But it did not begin in Oaxaca. Um, Pedro Linares began creating alabrijes in Mexico City in the 1930s. And this is where the dream part comes in. So when he was about 30 years old, he was really sick, had a fever, all of this. And this is how the story goes, right? Um, so he was really sick. He had a fever dream as he was dreaming. <clears throat> he dreamed about all of these fantastic, like mythical, weird creatures that he had never seen before. And the creatures were saying, Alebrijes, 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 which doesn't mean anything. It was the first time he had ever heard that word. So he was already an artist. He worked with like a type of paper mache and he made carnival masks and things like pinatas and so when he after he had this dream he was like I'm gonna bring these creatures to life so he used paper mache to make all of these strange creatures come to life so it could be you know a dog with wings and a scorpion tail whatever and they're painted in bright colors and patterns 
Um, so you could have stripes or polka dots or flowers or anything, it, whatever, whatever's in your imagination. Is it um, always like a composite of actual animals? Like just bits and pieces from different things that already exist? Yes, but also things that don't exist. I've seen monsters, um, just really anything. They can be part human, part animal, part weird monster, part animal, part anything. Anything you can come up with pretty much goes. So his alabrijes, after he started making them, they were so beautiful and just something that people had never seen before. And they became so popular that he began showing them in galleries and even started selling them to famous Mexican artists, Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo. Um, and then once the artisans in the Oaxaca area of Mexico learned about the alabrijes and, you know, what they were and the bright colors and you know everything that um, Pedro Linares was doing. Um, a man by the name of Manuel Jimenez started his own alabrijes on copal wood. And this type of wood in Mexico is thought to be magic. So instead of using the paper mache, he started using the copal wood. And so all of mine are the wooden kind. So mine are the more of the Oaxacan kind instead of the, the ones from Pedro Linares in Mexico City. Now his family, his descendants are still making the paper mache variety today. So you can still get them. Um, but again, there's a ton of families in the Oaxaca area that, that make them um, out of wood. This is more likely what you're gonna find. Um, in, in different gift shops and souvenir shops and things like that. Everything is completely done by hand. The wood is cut with a machete. Um, it's carved using chisels, knives, um, and then painted by hand. Um, and it's usually whole families that work together to do this. So maybe one person is doing the carving and then another person is doing the painting and, and things like that. So they all work together. And then the main person who works on it, or maybe the most skilled person that has worked on it, is who signs their name on the bottom. Not all of them have signatures, but I do have a few. So like on this one, you can see that it says Fabriges and Oaxaca. I'm assuming that's a signature. And then saying the area that it's from. Mm -hmm. This one says Carlos Gutierrez. I really can't read the rest, but you can see mm -hmm. that one. And again, not all of them have signatures, but I think it's pretty neat to know who or what family worked on your, each particular piece and, and where it comes from. Also, Mexico City every year has a huge alegrijes parade. And I would love to go one day they make these huge, huge alabrijes out of the paper mache. So they can be as big as floats, you know, and they're all done in the bright colors and the, and the patterns and everything. And I would love, love, love to see that with my own eyes one day. I mean, are they any kind of relevance to like Dia de los Muertos? Because they are like spirit animals that lead to like the land of the dead. Is it any, is there any correlation? No, because the whole spirit animal part of it really just came from the movie Coco. That was their tie-in to kind of put the beautiful Oliver Hayes in the movie and kind of give them a job. Um, they don't have a job? I have read. Hmm? So they don't have a job? <laughs> Not really. Um, I have read that some people use them to scare away bad spirits. So I think that's where you would get kind of the, the monster looking ones, you know, to kind of be more like a gargoyle type idea. Um, maybe, maybe this guy would scare away. What do you think? He could scare away some evil spirits. Yeah. <sighs> I definitely want him on my team, on my side. Right. 
Okay, so how about I show you some of these guys and we try to guess what animals they are okay. or what they're made up of. Okay, so we'll go back with scary dragon guy. Well, you just said one, so dragon. dragon. Yeah, and see, he actually stands on his feet and his tail, and but his head is this way, so he, he's actually like this. <laughs> uh-huh. But it lets him... Stand. Yeah, no. Okay. So he has two feet. He has and these two feet, tail, and then like two hands. Or other feet. I don't know. And then he's got spikes and wings and big ears and a long snout and fire. Also, alabrijes are the traditional ones from Oaxaca, the really like better made ones these mine aren't like top of the line but they're made so that the pieces come out they come out everything comes out and goes right back in so that's how you know if you have you know a better made one if it has the removable pieces but i'll show you one that i do not want to remove the pieces from because it would take forever to get them back in. Wow. Okay, so porcupine? I think so. But even so, every single one of these would come out. Wow. I guess that helps when it comes to painting it, though. Yeah. And I'd say, yeah, probably just a porcupine. He looks I don't know, he looks a little armadillo-ish. Yeah. But porcupine spikes. I love the colors of this one. And then... Cat? Definitely a cat. But you've never seen a cat this color. I love the flowers on this one. Look at his little face, little heart nose. And then I have some that are, that are tiny, like. What is that one? He's another little tiny dragon. That's what I was thinking. So do all of the dragons normally have the tail on the front like that to hold them up? Yeah, so they can stand up. Can you see his little face? Yep. But just to kind of show you the the size difference. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then I have a beautiful butterfly. Mm -hmm. See his little antenna? And this one actually has the price tag on it. I paid $7.50 in US dollars for this guy. What is that in pesos? Pesos? 135. Is that an armadillo? I believe so. Look at the little face. So cute. And this one has the writing on the belly too. Even though it's tiny, somebody claimed it. Oh, and then I have bigger armadillo. Mm -hmm. So again, big size difference. So what would be like a price difference between the big and the small? Um, this one says I paid about $15 for it. And I would say this one is was probably about eight dollars too. They don't really get cheaper than about eight dollars. Um, but I will say that in the past few years, the price has steadily been going up. I the wood traditionally used to make the alabrujes is copal wood, which they consider to be magical, and comes from a tree that is from Mexico and Central America. 
spell Copal? C-O-P-A-L. The Copal wood, the magic wood that they use to make these is becoming a lot more scarce, a lot more rare. Um, so I think that may be causing the price to go up. Also, they're getting more popular. But I hope that they will find another wood to use for them or figure out how to make the copal wood more sustainable. Um, Cause you definitely don't want to use up all of the copal wood and it would just be gone for- But also you could always resort back to the traditional paper mache kind. Right. I wonder if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Cause like more people interested in the culture and the history and stuff and wanting to be part of it. However, now it's a scarcity type situation. Mm -hmm. But to me, I think they'd be magical no matter what kind of wood they came from. Right. But again, that's tradition. That's it's something that's special to those people. So, you know, it's really up to them how they want to move forward. Oh. So definitely like a wolf or a dog. Mm -hmm. I would say wolf since it's howling. Right. But it has like an extra long snout. Yes. And maybe an odd shaped tail. But still very pretty. Very pretty colors on this one. Mm. So then, you know, we had this cat. Right. So the first one that I ever got. So a unicorn, but also Pegasus. But the tail is also very like, it looks like the wings. Yes. Twin boots. Maybe. It's all about your imagination, Kyla. Mm-hmm. Hummingbird. Oh, I was like, a cactus? Yeah. It is a cactus. With flowers. It really can be anything. It doesn't have to be necessarily, I guess plants are living. I was about to say, it doesn't have to be a living creature. but Right. This one's really neat because each petal would come off. The bird comes off. And just goes right back together. And now I'm wondering if you could just mix and match what you already have. <laughs> you pop of it one and put it on. I believe this is my this is my odd one. This is the one that came from Texas. But still close enough to Mexico that they had him in a in a little gallery gift shop. All right, that's my whole collection. Which one's your favorite? Um, <laughs> I would say either my horse, but just because it was the first one that I ever got. Mm -hmm. Or, I really love this guy. Those are probably my two favorites. Show Dante again. And you painted him? Yes. Did you paint over anything or did you buy him um, so my friend Stephanie got me this. He was just, he was solid white and he's not, he's not made of wood. He's just, he's just plastic. plastic. Um, he came with markers, like permanent markers so that you could color them yourself, but I couldn't really get the markers to work right. So I took all the marker back off, washed them off really well. And then I used my acrylic paint.
and it took me three or four days <laughs> to get him covered. Can you see his little tongue hanging out? He's so cute. I'm proud of him. So this, he may not be the traditional wood, but this is, this is the one olive that I have painted. I am artist. <laughs> I've seen some that are, you know, like this big. Huge. There's no possible way I can afford those. But But also you don't want to travel with those either. How no, do you absolutely. how do you travel with those once you buy them? Do you put them in a carry-on? Um, yes, they stay with me. Mm -hmm. Um, the people that you buy them from, whether it's a gallery gift shop or a tourist gift shop or wherever, um, they are always really, really good about wrapping and paper taping everything up for you um if any of the parts come out they'll go ahead and tape those out because you don't want to snap them off so once you get home with it you just unwrap it and then kind of put all the pieces back together um the only one i think that we didn't take apart was our porcupine hedgehog guy so he was just wrapped really well in paper, and then he got put in the very top of my carry-on bag, and I just kept a really close eye on him while I was traveling to make sure nothing happened. And as you can see, not one little chip, not one little flaw. So, success. Because these are more popular with tourists, and I think maybe more people know about them from the movie Coco, more people are buying them. And now the copal tree is endangered. So I hope they can figure out a way to make the copal tree, you know, this wood more sustainable um, or maybe switch to a different type of wood so that everyone can keep enjoying olive rehaze because I think it's a beautiful art form. I like the bright colors. Yeah. But like if if you participated in summer reading and got one of our indigenous tales kits, um, we did have an alabrije and well we had a color your own alabrije activity and there was also um, a Oaxacan foil animal craft activity that I've made a video for which you can find on our Facebook page. Um, so you can really make them out of pretty much anything. It, it's all based on your imagination. So it doesn't necessarily have to be made out of wood. Uh, it traditionally is. But if you want to. And then before that, paper mache. You can do paper mache. You can do wood. But uh, yeah, use your imagination. You can draw one on paper. You can, um, you made one out of foil, right? Um, anything. Because I wouldn't be able to make one out of wood. I can't carve wood, but I can cut out cardboard and wrap some foil around it. Right. Well, girl, you are protected, more than protected with all those. Right. Especially with old Greeny over here. He got me. That, that's from here on out his name. That is Greeny? That is Greeny. <laughs> this is Spike. I was I was this close to saying that whenever you picked him up the first time. I was like, oh, obviously Spike. Obviously Spike. Oh, and Dante. Yeah, and Dante. Oh, I love those. So you can check out some Coco books at your local library. So this one is like a picture book, and this one is more of a book for a little more advanced readers. So we have we have these for all ages. All right. Well, thank you so much, Miss Jennifer, thank for, you for having me. Mm -hmm. And where can people follow you or look you up? Um, you can head over to the blog to read about more souvenirs and more destinations that you can visit um, at justchasingrabbits.com. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Just Chasing Rabbits, and you can also find us on Twitter at Just Chasing Rab R A B B. Um, yeah, so look us up on social media and follow us and let's be friends. Yep. <laughs>
and I will include links in the description with the video.